All right, we're back from executive session. It is 9.38 p.m. No action was taken, no votes were cast. What are the wishes of council? Uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, Mayor, Mr. Council Member Marte Martinez. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to support the staff's recommendation and deny the extension of the injury leave. We have a motion by Councilman Mercurio Martinez. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Vidal Rodriguez. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is could we have someone interested in a motion to recess? So, uh, so Recess is Loretta City Council and convene as the Loretta Mass Transit Board. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those against, same sign. Motion carries. Motion to approve item 59. We have a motion. We have a second. There are seconds by Council Member Rosales. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Motion to adjourn as the Loretta Mass Transit Board and reconvene as the Loretta City Council. Motion to second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign, motion carries. Item B1, Council Member George Alco. Yes, sir. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I brought forward this item. This item. Uh, I've got a little bit of echo here. I brought forward this item here right into the record. Discussion so have, uh, action to mandate any and all local businesses that sell personal protective medical equipment to, to first sell said equipment to bona fide credentialed healthcare service providers workers and first responders with reasonable limits imposed in any matters incident thereto. And so um, the thrust of this agenda item comes from basically tracking what the Los Angeles mayor, uh, Eric Garcetti did very early on in their handling of the COVID crisis. They tasked their, um, their local businesses and their port authority with getting really creative to figure out how to locate these very critical um, goods so that they could safeguard their um, their first responders and their um, health in uh, their their health infrastructure, and and so uh, L A like like Laredo um, is uh, a big port. L A being number one, Laredo being number two in the Western Hemisphere. And so, you know, if if our port is not able to protect itself. Um, the whole country's supply chain, uh, as it relates to these critical items, but in general, stands to fall. And so, um, it, you know, I, I know it sounds very self-serving as it relates to the, you know, we've got to protect the city of Laredo first, but it's a reality. If we don't protect the city of Laredo first, and I'm talking about, you know, the men and women in blue, green, I'm talking about LPD, I'm talking about the the the... The, the fire department and their paramedics and our health our healthcare workers. I'm talking about palomitas who go in day in and day out and and have a really hard job and are exposed to the most vulnerable of our population. I'm talking about protecting them so that their families are protected so that this port continues to function. And so what they did in LA is they got their um, they got their they have a port director in LA. Um, but they, they, you know, named uh, their port director um, uh, to be their chief logistics officer. And he was tasked with going and securing critical materials and, order, and, 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 and looking at it. Okay, so looking at the city's purchasing power, we have purchasing power, right? We can, we can buy, you know, 100,000 masks or sets of gloves or whatever. Com our connections. I mean, look at our connections to our, our trading partner in of, of Mexico. You know, they looked at the logistics, the transportation, the assets, the information, and the manufacturing relationships that many of our constituents have with Mexico, and put together basically a, a tactical strike team uh, that was both private sector, uh, uh, you know, the, the federal government at the port and the city itself and tasked them with um, running all of these traps and, and, and locating these goods to protect the port. And I'm talking about dock workers, I'm talking about truck drivers. And we'll get in more into that in another agenda item, but I'll cut right to the chase. Um, my, my motion is um, that we, uh, that we um, 
task, uh, city management, and I know you're, y'all are already a step ahead of this because uh, we had this discussion Sunday night, um, but we, we tasked city management um, with uh, assembling a, a task force to help us locate this critical protective, uh, personal protective equipment for um, first responders, law enforcement, and anybody in the healthcare uh, um, uh, profession. And in addition, that we um, uh, mandate that, um, well, let me just put that motion first and I'll do a second motion if you don't mind. <laughs> the first motion. Okay, there's a motion made, is there a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Mark Martinez. Discussion? No? Uh, for the, no, go ahead, Dr. Martinez. I just wanna, uh, two, two quick things. Oh, that sounds awesome. Um, Number one, I, I think some of these efforts uh, are already being done, which is fantastic. And, and number two, um, I, I think that, that when we're looking at this, uh, one, one of the things we have to remember is that it, it seems like the smaller uh, vendors are the ones that have availability. So, so we have to be very facile in trying to grab this equipment because it, there is production that's being done, um, but it's getting scooped up because we're competing against all of America right now, and really against the whole world right now. And, and so, um, and lastly, is we have to be very careful because we've already been burned with some of these PPE that may not be a, um, a good uh, PPE. And so we have to be very careful and ask for the data sheets and the specifications, where they're from, everything before we actually start purchasing. And so I, I, I just want to clear that up because it's, um, it, it is very important. And, and I'd like to just call for the question on those in favor, say aye. 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 By a show of hands, uh, any opposed? No, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, go ahead, please. Yeah, so second part of my motion, by the way, um, for purposes of the record, if we could uh, please absorb uh, Dr. Martinez's points as um, uh, minutes relevant to the execution of the, of the motion itself. Um, so if that would be duly noted, please. As it related uh, to the second part of my motion on this agenda item, is that we in fact do uh, uh, at this very critical juncture, you know, if you want to call it peak week or, 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 or you know, pre-peak week, I don't know what you call it, but this very critical juncture, uh, my motion is simply that we mandate that any and all local businesses that uh, have for sale uh, personal protective medical equipment to first sell said equipment to bona fide credentialed healthcare service providers um, and first responders with reasonable limits imposed and um, and that they uh, make that available to uh, um, um, for first responder, well, as, to, as stated, that, that's my motion. And I would identify local businesses as those businesses that are doing business within the city of Laredo, including but not limited to um, uh, you know, pharmacies, um, personal protective medical equipment, wholesalers and retailers, um, HEB, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, any local business that has N95 masks, surgical masks, gowns, gloves, shields, disinfectants, hand sanitizing gel, air protection, hair head protection, et cetera, anything that's gonna protect a, a first responder or frontline medical worker or palomita that we have those um, first be reserved for um, healthcare professionals um, and first responders. And then if there's surplusage after that, by all means, sell it to the public. That's my motion. Okay. There's a motion seconded by Council Member Vilma. Sorry, I don't want to. In your discussion, Council Member Alto, you mentioned the Port Authority. Is there another motion coming regarding uh, the supply distribution, the custom brokers, and uh, other things that can be monitored there, or should we include them in this motion? Yeah, no, uh, you're, 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 you're right on point. Um, Dr. Martinez has a, uh, a great um, agenda item that's right on point that I think mm, mm, a motion for just that will piggyback a little bit better on that motion, and so we'll get to that. Uh, but yes, we got one coming here tonight. Thanks. Okay, so, uh, 
Go for the question, then all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No show of hands. Motion carries. Thank you. Next. Yeah, my second item is a discussion possible action to encourage and assist uh, with making use of our non-essential personnel um, so that they can get trained and be um, uh, repurposed um, for any sort of um, uh, counseling as it relates to small businesses um, that may qualify for that um, loans. A lot of reverb coming back at me. I know we've kind of already touched on that, but I just wanted to memorialize it. And I know management, you guys are on this, and uh, and I know Mr. Garcia is on this, but um, uh, we and I think we may have already addressed it in part, but just to kind of belt and suspenders that, um, if uh, my, my motion is that we designate um, and train non-essential personnel, those that we can afford to, uh, within management's discretion, um, to be able to assist the public especially small businesses with keeping their employees retained through any and all federal and state resources available. I'll second the discussion. There's a motion as presented by the council member Alger and seconded by Dr. Marta Martinez. A discussion, go ahead, sir. Yes, um, number one, um, uh, to, to management uh, uh, and deputy as well, how do you feel um, about essential employees being able to be used for this purpose. Do you think that you can train them quick enough um, mm -hmm. to get them going? Uh, is it something that that is feasible? Um, and, and can <laughs> and how would we do it? Would we um, go out into the public to do it, or would it be? Uh, that, that's my concern. I guess is how how to affect this. Uh, properly, I, I love the idea. I, I'm I'm trying to champion this idea, but I'm. I'm I also know the, the, the difficulty in, in doing this. And I, I think that, um, if I'm not mistaken, Petro says that several organizations are already doing this. So can we just maybe incorporate to what they're doing uh, and, and uh, lend them some employees or, or lend them some, um, some resources so that they can get this done? Because I, I know that if, if Petro um, is, is still here, I think he can speak to that. Because I think that there's already several organizations that are doing this, and maybe we can just piggyback off of them instead of starting from scratch. Right. So thank you, uh, Mayor Council Members, to answer that question. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest, I, I wouldn't want us to get people in front of other people. Again, that's contrary to exactly everything we've heard tonight. But what I can say is that if we can help with phone banking, let's say if we direct all phone calls for this question to go through, uh, EDC, let's let's challenge EDC. Hey, so you be the repository of these questions, and if we can go ahead and pick up and be uh, uh, on those hotlines, that phone number, as we're at home, perhaps we can see that for sure. Uh, but I wouldn't suggest uh, at this point we would send people anywhere uh, face to face, but helping over the phone or via internet is, I think, a, a tool that we can deploy our forces to do. Right? Yes, we have that council member Rodriguez. Go ahead, please. And uh, to a great stance, I know we have the Laredo Economic Development uh, that we actually uh, fund them. Uh, can we require or request from them that they actually go and do that and give us a certain percentage of how many phone calls they get per month or say this is our outreach? I mean, last I checked, we were limited in some type of projects. This is a great uh, grassroots project that they could be out of and they could actually use the money uh, that we are funding them to do. Uh, put them to work, put them to do something, help out the local. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Mayor? Uh, Council Member Vilma. Um, precisely on point, uh, Council Member Vilan Rodriguez. Last uh, week's meeting with the, the board and other uh, participants with the LEDC, the Mile One project is providing these uh, launch uh, services for resources regarding the, the loans and the different uh, information for employers. And uh, they, they were also seeking from some of the financial entities the training. However, there are some restrictions from SBA because it's only financial institutions that can, uh, 
can provide this service. So it, it is limited as far as what they can do. They, they can guide them. They can have the checklist that each different bank provides and, and try to guide them as to what evidence or supported documentation they might need uh, to meet the, the checklist of each different bank. Uh, but my one is, is currently doing that to, to reach out and keep the, the Chamber of Commerce as well on their website. Yeah. Go ahead, council members. And to that, make a motion that. Uh, oh, I'll uh, take an amendment though, and I agree. Okay, so, uh, call for the question then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, aye. Hands up. Aye. All those opposed? None seen. Motion carried unanimously. Go ahead. And if I may, I'd like to make a motion that we keep track of how many. Uh, uh, phone calls or, well, we're not trying to encourage house visits or business visits, but uh, the Laredo Economic Development does, and apart from mile one, because mile one to me, it's an entity by itself, and Laredo EDC, it's another entity. So we'll task them on uh, who does the most outreach by phone number and how do they bring it on, and essentially maybe one will beat the other and they get better funding from the city. That's, that's an option. Or, or just say suggestion. Uh, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll second that, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, put it, and I put it for the next council, so uh, an item on the agenda for next council for EDC and Mile One to do the outreach program. No, no, uh, I, small business I, loans. Mayor, Mayor. Um, yes, council member, all good. Yeah, no, I, I second that motion. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, what a lot of communities are doing is is they're actually, they've got a challenge. That there's, a, there's a challenge going. They're challenging Chamber of Commerce versus Mile One versus EDC. They're challenging their citizens and their small businesses. Yeah, to but legal is saying, yeah, legal is saying that, that there's really no agenda item. Well, the, I, 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 words, apparently. I accept it as an amendment. And, and and to include the Chamber of Commerce and the public at large. Okay. Second. Okay, is it an amendment? Uh, so we'll have to bring it back. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, motion to bring back that item? Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's a motion to bring it back, uh, and there's a second. B2. B2. B2, right. Okay, so. Uh, Motion to accept uh, uh, Councilman. Would you want me to Would you want me to Mr. Mike? Yeah, so um, I would just accept uh, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez's um, uh, motion in the form of an amendment, and and just I would include the Chamber of Commerce uh, as well, so that we have three entities um, that that were. And uh, inviting to be part of this challenge. Okay, and, and the second is by uh, Council Member Rodriguez. And discussion. I've heard all the favors had by, by raising your hand. All, all those against, none seen. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Next. Yeah, and, and by the way, that previous item was uh, co-sponsored by, by by Mr. Torres and by Mr. Rodriguez, and I, and I thank you all support. Um, the next agenda item, B3, uh, reads discussion of possible action to keep public transit free for uh, six months to keep people uh, mobile and any matters uh, incident there too. This was also um, co-sponsored by Mr. Mr. Torres, uh, Dr. Martinez, and Mr. Rodriguez, and, and uh, uh, I think we should do just that. We've, we've got to keep we've got to keep people moving. It sounds like. Okay. Uh -oh. The audio is frozen again. Uh, okay, go ahead. 
no, no, I think it's working. It's all second. So there's a motion and a second by Dr. Martin Martin. What happened? Yes, uh, if I may real quick. Let's go ahead, Mr. Rodriguez. And, uh, and I supported uh, this item because uh, I co-sponsored for the sake of discussion. And I understand that the free transit is very important, uh, Council Member Alget. I mean, you know I'm a very big advocate for that. But I would rather say we go on a month-to-month -month basis based on the, the longevity of the COVID situation instead of just going six months uh, or at least, say, to physical year. What we're trying to do is trying to limit. Uh, I'd rather... We have a lot of fires to put out at this point, and if we go in a six months, it's going to be a hard time for a city man. Just to go on a month by month basis, and that'll probably give us good figures, and we're still helping out the public. So you never know, if you last till the end of the year, it'll be just this six months. But if not, I mean, at the moment that the uh, federal government says, you know what, COVID-19 is over, and we're assured that no cases are no longer going to be, people are no longer going to be contagious, then uh, we were able to go back online at a full, full effort, and that's when transit tends to be self-sufficient, as much self-sufficient as possible. Yes, Council, yeah, I think our city manager wanted to speak. Yeah, and definitely would like, uh, uh, last time we had first transit to chime in with the metro, this is uh, uniquely important. Uh, Hello? Yes, Ms. San Miguel, can you uh, speak to the side, please? Uh, yes, uh, good evening, Claudia San Miguel, uh, Kira Maria for El Metro. Uh, we've been reviewing uh, different um, information. Uh, uh, first, I have to thank everybody for um, approving uh, for us to go out and, and request those funds under the, uh, the CARES Act. Uh, that should bring in um, direct funds uh, that require no match for $9.988 million for the transit system. Uh, we had our first um, round of information uh, coming from the um, uh, Department of Transportation last week. And since then, we've been participating in a different numbers of um, webinars and uh, uh, meetings, conferences. First, uh, with the Department of Transportation and then with the uh, tech dot here at the state. Um, a lot of information. Uh, we're still reviewing those uh, expenses that are eligible. For the most part, everything that we've been doing uh, above and beyond um, and, you know, PPE, uh, cleaning and things like that, those are going to be 100% reimbursable. We're still dealing and, and requiring clarification as far as labor. That, that's definitely a big chunk of our expense, so we're still trying to understand um, how much we're going to be able to, to use out of this uh, $9.9 .9 million. We're going to try and maximize those dollars in combining them in the best possible way so we can maximize the operating dollars that we already received. So I'm confident that we're going to be able to cover the deficit, but still too early for me to ensure and, and tell you right now we're going to cover the deficit. So um, I, I understand and I'm 100% with the idea of providing right now that essential mobility. Uh, right now, the people that are taking the bus, we can uh, guarantee the transit-dependent population. So the service and the mobility is needed out there. So I, I appreciate the fact that we're providing that essential service right now. Uh, but I'm... Uh, in full agreement with uh, Council Member Rodriguez that we have to go in with caution and do it probably on a month-to-month -month basis because that's going to keep us within the umbrella that we're providing this essential service. Uh, that until we get more clarification directly from TxDOT and FTA as far as the use of this other grant. Uh, I say Thank you very much. Based on that, uh, yes, that's 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 my I would like to see if uh, Councilman uh, Alka would add to his amendment by, uh, and, and we see this now uh, being enacted at the local grocery stores where they're putting a plexiglass around their, their uh, uh, 
of the clerks that are taking in and that maybe that we can add a plexiglass divider between the driver and the rest of the public uh, just in case somebody doesn't bring in their cover and, and coffee or what have you it might be something that might protect them so if you would consider that uh, consequence mr mayor may i heard yes go ahead please yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll accept both um, Mr. Rodriguez's uh, amendment and Mr. Martinez's amendment, and I am um, uh, happy to make available any um, uh, District 7 priority funds if, if, you know, finance lets it happen, legal lets it happen to um, uh, insulate and protect our drivers as, as much as we can. Uh, we realize that they're critical um, uh, essential, uh, uh, you know, workers who are exposed just to, you know, hundreds of people, if not thousands every day. So um, that's my motion. Okay, so motion is, is it seconded by Dr. Martin Oh, okay. Yvonne Rodriguez. We have one recusal for Okay, so if I could be allowed to understand that uh, it's difficult to plan six months ahead and not know the budgetary constraints of, but remember, we're federally funded over 90%, correct? Mrs. Samuel, is that accurate? Under these uh, new grants, the CARES Act, it's 100%. We just need clarification as to what's going to be an eligible expense. My goal is to maximize current grants. So if you could allow me just a couple more days to get that clarification, like I said, I'm trying to maximize all the dollars that we have on hand so we can cover all the deficits from the uh, dedicated sales tax and also from the uh, herd collection that we're losing right now. So the match Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Dr. Martin, the reason why I'm saying this and why I, I really um, supported this is because um, this isn't a uh, it, this is providing an essential service, but it's more than that. This is an economic driver for our city. Can, am I on there? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. The, the, this is an economic driver for our city. In other words, the more we can move people socially, the more we can move our economy. Uh, and people, especially especially as people have lost their jobs, their ability to travel and to have vehicles is probably going to be diminished. And so people that are looking for jobs for the next two to three months, four months, are likely going to be using this service. And so we have to start planning social mobility um, uh, by looking at this particular avenue, which is the way that most people are going to get around, uh, especially in lieu of, of a dwindling economy, local economy. And so the reason why I think it's so important to do uh, a few months, uh, not, not just month to month, but a few months, uh, is because we want to reassure people that as they're looking for their new job, um, and unemployment increasing as much as it has, that they can count on getting to work and home from work free for two, three, four, five months until they're back on their feet. That is the reason why I think committing to a longer period of time is important. Not a fiscal reason, but a reason of socially, un so people can know fundamentally that when they go apply for a job, that they can say, yes, I have a way to get to work. That is important, and that is something that you will see across the city uh, play out as people lose their vehicles for lack of payment. So I think it's very important that the city commits to mobility and, and extended mobility, and, 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 and that's why I think that, that, that having at least four months, five months, six months of this service being free is going to help our economy. Yes, and uh, it also has to qualify within that, that uh, the FEMA, the umbrella. Well, yeah, so uh, what I would say to, to this comment, I, I, I agree that they're part of the uh, continued uh, turn of our economy. And then more than that, actually, it's part of that recovery program with, with as businesses come up. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how this will work out with FDA to see if this would be a qualifying expense too, because we also do have a commitment even with our drivers, they, they are unionized, so we have to recognize that. So there's some commitments forward that I'd like to ask questions about. And so if I were to suggest anything, I, 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 at, at this point, outside of, I, I, would, I would go with our staff one, but if there's anything, I wouldn't go with us uh, next a month perhaps, or, or even that, because I, I, I just don't know, I don't have the answers on the FTA side. I don't know how, what would be funded, what would be our internal costs. I couldn't be able to provide um, a recommendation past at least what we know. And I understand the reasons for it, but as we put all these things in sequence, uh, where it all makes sense, I think would help uh, me. And I, I, I wouldn't want to make a recommendation to you because I, I think it might uh, be the right time for this piece to be put into place. I'd like to know that would help at this point. And so from what I understand at this point, uh, Ms. Sunday, we, we are not charging fares until when? The, the way that it was approved, it was as long as the uh, major orders are in place. So if, that, so if we continue with that, Mayor, and if you'll allow us to put this as a cornerstone of our economic recovery plan, we'll add that as well. But going forward today, we have it already. We will not be moving on this uh, and charging uh, fares. This would be something definitely going back. But rest assured, I mean, we, we're the first to tell you that we don't want to uh, have that undue burden on, on individuals as well. But I just wanted to clarify that on, on how we have this set up at this point, too. Okay, I think that's a good uh, uh, so I guess uh, I'll call for the next question. All those in favor say aye by raising your hand. Any opposed? I give by raising your hand. Now I'm seeing motion carries unanimously. Aye. Aye. No, it's my item. Uh, <coughs> in one, discussion with possible action on City of Laredo media outlets and public release of information released up to the COVID-19 procedures and any other matters that are incident to. This has come on, and I think we're about to hit a month about the COVID situation, give or take. And to this moment right now, as far as uh, media outlets, I haven't heard any radio station, I haven't seen any TV advertisement. And maybe I think we're limited on the newspaper uh, outreach. Uh, what are we doing as a procedure to uh, find out how many people are, or give out the information to people as much as possible based on the PIO side. I know we're doing a lot of Facebook, but guys, not the whole community has Facebook. Uh, many of our community remember it's, uh, their primary language is uh, Spanish. So what are we doing? What is the protocol? And uh, how do we go about it from now on? Management? Yeah, so we got Pierre Rafael Benavides on the line. I can tell you what we do at a minimum on a daily brief that we push out with uh, uh, Spanish, English, Spanish, radio, print, social media, um, and on top of what we push out with information as well. Uh, this conversation, to be, you know, I was talking something yesterday, uh, same time as what I had in the newspaper article yesterday about. The eighty-two million dollars worth of cuts for the city of San Antonio. In the story too was a major piece on communications with the city council of San Antonio, expressing to the city manager of San Antonio the need for greater communication between them and how there was different opinions how the communications were going. So I, I understand it. I mean, even up in the city of San Antonio, they get this question too. So um, for actual numbers and the number of media outlets, what we're doing. Uh, how many are, 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 are being discussed? I can get not one, but I'll give you one example that I know personally. And he's a he's a, a radio station personality that is unemployed right now. And so you know, he would have been a partner with us. He is no longer employed with the radio station. So he's not currently working. And so as even the marketing dollars are shriveling up, even our media are starting to come down and right size themselves. And so 
Uh, we, we agree with you, face, Facebook is not the only thing. Uh, our newspaper is a daily, we get that too. But we've got uh, Spanish, English, in print, uh, on TV. And so what I'd like to do is, is have uh, uh, Mr. Benavides jump in and give us a more precise listing of, of who's our partners and how we do. Uh, good evening. Um, yes, yeah, so um, regarding the outreach for media, uh, what I can say is that we're actually reaching all of the media platforms. So every day, as uh, Mr. City Manager mentioned, we do have a media briefing, and we have all media locally, regionally, and we have media you know, calling in even from Dallas, Austin, um, the Valley, other places, because uh, they want to know what's going on in Laredo. So we do have some ads that run already in El Mañana and LMT. Uh, we do have ads that are running in KGNS and Univision. Um, we do have uh, we do have uh, advertising spots at at the airport that will be putting up. We have uh, advertising at the outlet shops, um, at the arena on the loop, and we just talked to um, uh, Achar Media. They'll be giving us some free advertising. With their digital billboards we have lamar advertising that gave us some digital billboards so that's already up as well on specific and high traffic areas around laredo we have our text message group um, that uh, we send out daily texts about at least two every day to thousands of people in laredo in both english and spanish we have our website uh, citylawyer.com coronavirus with all the information on there very detailed and we have daily press uh, releases that go out um, they are usually given out in English and we translate them in Spanish, but they're available in both languages on the website. So we are reaching every single market, including radio. We've been doing a couple of interviews in La Raza, in Guerra Communications, Our Communications, and they're also part of our media briefings. But uh, we do plan to wrap, ramp up some of our advertising uh, with the media, not just uh, free messaging, but actually paid messaging as well. Um, so we'll be, we'll be increasing that as well, but we are reaching all avenues uh, for the public. And at, and at this point, uh, it's great to hear that uh, you're actually uh, uh, pushing forward the message. Uh, like I told you, uh, we have like about a week with the uh, ordinance for the mask, uh, yet I haven't heard anything. Uh, many people still are going out without masks. They're not doing the social distancing for six feet. So I would like to make a motion that we reach out to all radio stations, all TV stations, and that we actually design commercials based on the city that we advertise that we are putting this and forward all the new ordinances for the city for the time being for the COVID situation, uh, that city management works on it. And uh, as soon as possible, due to the circumstances that all people may find out of what's really going on. Second. I'll second and third that. There's a motion that was presented by uh, Council Member Gerardo uh, Rodriguez and seconded by Dr. Martinez. Discussion here. Discussion. Go ahead. Mayor, Mayor. And add uh, an amendment to to your motion to include uh, public service announcement, uh, not just for covering up, yeah, but also uh, to discard of their mask and and gloves properly and not on the on the street and in shopping carts. Okay, as amended, uh, and we have uh, yeah, Council Member Verma and then Bali. Yes, and I think that we have discussed this in one of those uh, 11 o'clock meetings, but if you would uh, accept an amendment also, uh, that it, it be uh, in compliance with the requirements of the governor for special needs populations with an interpreter and with uh, pictures of what you can or cannot do with, with pictures that can be used for, with visuals. <coughs> Is amended, and then we have Council Member Bali. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I got a, um, a uh, call today from a, a resident, and they were concerned that during the Easter holiday, extended families are going to want to gather, as is as is the, the tradition. And I know people are aware that they shouldn't, but but um, perhaps we should have a campaign this week uh, about celebrating Easter you know, through social media, through phone calls, through other means aside from gathering with extended family, that family needs to be just a single home and uh, Easter needs to be celebrated uh, otherwise. Uh, I am afraid that this weekend we will have uh, people violating 
the, the uh, social distancing rule. As amended on the control and body and to add that we also put up the fines so people can understand by them breaking this ordinance, this is what they're, they're eligible to be fined from the ranges of uh, zero to a thousand. Yeah. Another question in regards to what Council Member Bali was mentioning. I've gotten calls and texts from different uh, denominations also asking about uh, drive through services for their church or um, parking lot services for uh, during Easter. So I don't know if we can provide some guidelines and we can get clarification for those issues. Well, I, I think at least with regards to my motion, I, I'm not, I, I, I wasn't to. Uh, to address churches because yeah, of okay, okay. that, that with regards to, to what I was saying, I was referring to families. I know that with regard to churches, the governor has made an order, and I wouldn't want us to do anything in violation of that order. Uh, Council member uh, Vielma's suggestion is, is not that either. She's just saying people may want some guidance about what the, what the, the, the churches can do. I don't know that we can necessarily address that through... Maybe, maybe not through advertising, but, but uh, find some other way uh, to address it on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I mean, in reality, we can't really interfere if the church, if, if everybody in the church wants to, you know, gather together, we can't uh, stop them from doing that. Um, if they want to gather, you know, obviously we'd encourage everyone, um, you know, if they're doing it, that they do it with social distancing. But that's that's you know that's not for this council to uh, to decide, and, and uh, I wouldn't want us to, to go down that road. Honorable Mayor, okay. uh, we'll Honorable Mayor, please land it. You may be working here. Mr. Mayor. And, and I understand there is already an order explaining from the Attorney General, from the Governor, so just as, as part of the communication that we're providing, we understand what's coming. And can I just add, because we have raised our level to substantial community transition, um, the Governor allows us to actually completely ban gathering. So we are at a heightened risk, so it, it's consistent with the, the guidelines, the National CDC guidelines. So as a matter of fact, They've since changed since we've raised the level substantially. So they're not allowed at all. And CD does know this and it's enforcing it and trying to spread the word. Mr. Mayor? Thank you for the clarification. Mr. Mayor? That's you. If I may also remember, uh, please put a home stoppers on there. Remember to advise people that if they see a large gathering, if they see somebody that's uh, disobeying the ordinance, uh, please call. This is a safety issue for all citizens. We're, uh, we have to be a vigilant. Everybody has to be on the lookout and uh, take care of one another. Uh, I know we have those uh, disobedient at, uh, residents that don't want to listen or feel this might be a joke, but it's real, ladies and gentlemen, it is here. And we're just trying to get by as fast as possible and Please allow those media outlets and especially Crime Stoppers or Loretta Police Department or other government entities that are assisting county, uh, DPS. Uh, we're all one family at this point. So. Well, thank you. Next item. Oh, that was a, oh, that was a motion. Oh, was a motion. Was a, uh, oh okay. Uh, there's a motion. Uh, there's been several amendments along the way. But uh, uh, Metro City Secretary, I guess you have all the amendments. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I call for the question, all those in favor say aye. aye. Raising your hand and uh, all those opposed? None heard. Uh, well, motion carries. Uh, People talk about it. Yes. Again? Uh, let's see. Is the uh, status report by police department on execution plan to implement and enforce current ordinances passed and the declaration of civil disaster and any of the benefits? The motion to extend the meeting to 11, I mean, I'm sorry, to 1045. Second. There was a motion to extend the meeting to 1045, seconded by 
with his efforts, with his operation style. This has allowed uh, patrol operations not to be impacted and the patrol services continue uh, to be out there so our officers can do their job while they, this other special operations group uh, conducts that enforcement and, and responds to these community uh, concerns regarding any violations. I'll open it for any questions. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Yes, go ahead, sir. Um, thank you, Chief. Uh, quickly, um, I know this is what we're doing for COVID-19, but are you seeing um, crimes and other things go down or go up in other avenues? Uh, just, I just want to, to, to see if this is actually having an impact in, in other aspects of our community as well. Uh, yes, uh, we, we are tracking two crimes that are very important. Uh, obviously, can we, uh, Domestic violence has always been the, in, the, in, in the forefront when it comes to, to tracking. And we did see a spike of uh, domestic violence, not a spike, but an increase uh, approximately 4%, 3 to 4% in comparison to, to this time last year. So that's, that's the, the comparison we're using. So also the, the thefts, the petty thefts have increased. That we have seen about a 5% increase as well, maybe a little bit higher. Um, and we're seeing a lot of these uh, take place at, at uh, convenience stores where people go in, grab, grab drinks, they grab whatever available on the way out the door. There's a lot of these, these uh, petty uh, thefts that are being reported. Uh, we've shared this, this information with uh, our, our partners with the county, and again, to increase the presence at these stores and, and different hours when we see the spikes. So aside from that, everything else, our, our officers are out there doing a great job. Uh, maintaining their social distancing while doing the, the enforcement because we want them healthy. So with the changes, the operational changes that we took, uh, in, in, you know, took effect and taking some, some of these reports uh, by the telephone uh, to avoid the unnecessary contact is helped a lot. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, uh, Kassim? Are you done? No, no, no action. No. Okay. Uh, on uh, a contingency plan of all city departments, specifically planning and zoning and building departments and how they're servicing our stakeholders. And any other matters incident there too. Um, we, have, we have all appointed uh, our respective uh, uh, <coughs> appointments to the different um, mm -hmm. committees. And I just wanna make sure because even though we're in crisis mode, we still have to run the day-to-day -day operation of the business uh, of, of the city. And so I just want to make sure that uh, specifically in these particular areas, our economy is driven by, by uh, our growth as well. And, uh, and construction still has to go on. And so I was concerned that uh, we're not meeting and if we're not meeting, uh, how, or, or if we're meeting, how are we meeting? Uh, uh, is it by Skype? Is it by, by the methods that we're using right now? Uh, but uh, the business still needs to uh, go on. Um, our manager, if you wanna comment on that. Yeah. Or... Thank you, <clears throat> um, Mr. Curry or Garcia can chime in, but we, as an example today, there was an NPO that was held uh, this is what we're pushing and promoting, these uh, WebEx type of, of conversations, these online meetings and document sharing. Um, but specifically, if, if uh, Mr. Kirby wants to jump in and just talk real quickly about uh, planning and how it's being done, and then uh, building uh, does pretty close to the same. Yes, sir. Kirby Snydman here, planning director. Everything is continuing as normal. We're, we're we're not receiving any, um, or we're not um, changing any of our things that we're taking. We're, we're processing applications, plats, zoning applications, everything just like normal. We missed a couple of meetings due to the library being shut down and then the order from the, the council, but everything else has moved forward. Everything's scheduled as normal. 
Today we did have a meeting, our MPO meeting. We're gonna follow the same pattern for our planning commission. We're using WebEx, we're using, uh, we're taking online submissions and we're taking call public comment by call-in. Following best practices that we've been advised by the state and also by, by uh, legal and, and the city. So we're, everything's being done appropriately. So we're moving forward just like we have been. Uh, nothing has changed for us for planning. Okay, so there, there were some meetings that were canceled when we first started this, is that correct? Correct, the okay. first one was because we noticed at the library and then the library was closed. And so we can't just change the meeting location overnight. That's something we have to notice multiple days in advance. So we missed that one and then the, the, the one after that we missed because we were advised by council initially there was the two week period, all committees, commissions and everything was canceled. But we've since clarified and everything is set up on schedule since then. So we're moving forward and, and we've communicated with all of our engineers and applicants to make sure that anything that's urgent is being put on the next meeting regardless of when it came in. Thank you. On the building side, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Next item. And where are we? Are we? Yeah, I think we covered H1 and G2. No, so G2 is my item. It's discussion with possible action to develop a tax abatement program for a period of three to six months for local businesses that were forced to close and did not terminate any of their employees during the period of the city of Laredo emergency order and or emergency order as a result of Corona COVID-19 and any other matters incident there too, co-sponsored by council member Dr. Marta Martinez and council member George Alkelt. Um, this is something we want to explore to assist our local businesses. Um, I'll let uh, council member Marta Martinez chime in um, and uh, assist me with this and then uh, council member George as it's something we've been discussing, you know, these last few days. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor, if I may. Let's go ahead, Dr. Martinez. So this is something that um, other communities are starting to utilize, especially uh, some of the communities in the Valley, um, small tax abatement programs to keep small businesses going. Um, and what they're doing is they're giving either a, a small abatement or an actual grant itself. Um, and so these are two possibilities that we can utilize um, or two possible uh, mechanisms that we can utilize to um, expedite economic recovery. The abatement program uh, is very similar to what Mayor Pro Temp had talked about before with the 8.33% discount, but this would be more associated with either, um, uh, uh, again, either ad valorem taxes or an economic incentive of some kind um, to try to get businesses, especially those that kept their employees um, employed, um, uh, to reward them with, a, a, with a, either a, an abatement program or a grant, which is the next item. Um, and so that's kind of what we're trying to do. I, I do think that if we're starting to establish a task force, it might be prudent to um, uh, task the task force with this, uh, the development of this. But I do think that this is something that needs to happen now. We need to plan for it now. You want to take them together? Yes, I think we take them together. Uh, would you like to make a motion to bring up item yeah. V3? Uh, <laughs> take There's a motion to bring up also item uh, G3 and seconded by Councilmember Mark Martinez. Discussed. Not heard all those in favor say aye, but raise your hand. And any opposed, just raising your hand as well. None seen. So, um, we have to and I yield to Dr. Martinez too. Thank for having two different items. So the first one is an abatement program, whether uh, it be, I think it be ad valorem taxes would be the appropriate um, use um, uh, for this for next fiscal cycle. Um, uh, that I think uh, we, we've already discussed some of, of the way that we could do it, but this would be directed at um, businesses. So this isn't for homes, this is for, for businesses that have been closed. The second one is uh, the possibility of creating a local grant program, which is exactly what, what the Valley is doing right now. They're creating a local grant program, either 5,000 to $10,000 that they give to businesses that come in and fill out an application uh, and meet the requirements of not letting any of their employees go. And so it may only be one payroll period that it covers, maybe a payroll period and a half that it covers, um, but it is enough to keep them from going under. Uh, and I think uh, Teclo has some information about what other um, uh, cities are doing in this respect. And I, I think the, uh, the major thing is to task the task force with doing this. And using our resources. Yeah, Mr. Garcia, would you respond? 
Yes, uh, hi, uh, Mayor uh, Council. Uh, this is Tecla Garcia, Director of Economic Development again. Um, yes, there are other cities that are doing this. Um, uh, uh, Bear County and San Antonio combined to put $5 million into an account uh, and work with Lift Fund. So Lift Fund, Lift Fund will execute the plan or do the applications and the processing and Okay, how about now? Can you hear me? Okay, so, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, so uh, Bear County and San Antonio uh, work with Lift Fund, so Lift Fund could handle the applications, the verifications, and all the financial paperwork because the the city and the uh, uh, the county uh, that's not their expertise. Uh, El Paso's uh, done something similar. Uh, College Station. Uh, has done a very sm much smaller effort. They 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 used um, uh, community development funds to to do a three hundred thousand uh, um, dollar you know program. Uh, you the, the the these programs are excellent. Um, just keep in mind that you're you're going to help us only a certain amount of businesses uh, with that with that funding because um, even a million dollars you if, at ten thousand dollars you're going to help a hundred businesses. And there's about 30,000 businesses in Laredo. Uh, so, um, you know, that, but uh, that, that's what other cities are doing. Yeah, and and, and I, again, I, I don't think we can help every city in Laredo, but we have to try to help as many cities, or excuse me, as many businesses in Laredo that we can, right? We can't help every business in the city of Laredo, but we try, have to try to help as many as we can. The federal government is also putting X amount of dollars into, into this recovery effort. Uh, and I think we should do the same thing. We should use some of our reserve funds um, or to create these programs. I think it's it, this is um, it, it is raining outside right now, guys. This is this is what this money is designed for for emergencies. And so uh, I just want to clarify with legal that grants are possible and that abatement programs are possible because I, I think it's important to know that the can we or can we not create these? Ordinarily, no, but they have allowed a lot of. Um Anyway, to these types of um, programs now with what's going on and I have seen other cities do so so I guess if the motion is passed it would just be to the extent that it's legal and we will try to make sure that it that this program will be implemented in accordance with the May motion to make uh, our last extension of the meeting till 11 okay. okay there's a motion uh, to extend it to 11 and seconded by the, the council member Mark Martinez uh, all those in favor say aye any opposed the motion carries uh, Yes, uh, so there's a motion for that. Uh, no motion, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, my, my concern would be just the availability of money. Uh, uh, you know, keep in mind, most probably we'll see delinquencies, uh, you know, people not being able to pay their, their, their ever loan taxes, uh, uh, and, and less money's coming into, you know, the coffers. And then, you know, on top of that, uh, you know, the general fund, you know, all of the, uh, the, the property tax money goes to the general fund. Uh, yeah. I, I understand, Mayor, uh, but I, I, I want to caution of, against being um, somewhat, uh, and not, no disrespect, but short-sighted. And, and what we need is a very um, a thorough recovery plan, and that does include pumping some of the money that we have in reserves back into our city to get the economy flowing again. And that is, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, either money that we have um, in, in uh, our, our, our fund balance or money that we have from, from abatement programs or money that we have um, from our, uh, uh, huh? from the kitty, or, or money that we have from uh, money in the sports revenue if they happen to be sports revenue related. And I know these things aren't necessarily uh, kosher, but, but we have to look at all options, explore all options right now of getting economic recovery going again. So, Mayor, if we can, so we definitely want to look at all, all, all possibilities. For sure, we, if that's a direction, we definitely would want to do that. Uh, but, but we also, as we say it as well, I mean, we're saying this, we're all saying the same thing, right? I think at the end of the day, so we do want to help. That needs to be part of the mix for sure. But we're looking, we, we need to consider also the viability of even this business that we're trying to run. And that's, that's concerned, too, that we still pay police, fire, all of those major services i think it's uh, again i'll repeat i think it's a major component of the recovery package uh so if if the council uh, uh directs us to 
a look at how we would roll this out, what it would look like, what would be the qualifiers, who would be able to qualify, what funding source we would be able to use, because we're tapping the same general fund. I mean, we're, we're, we're tapping the same general fund uh, that we're, we're also trying to pay. There's a reciprocal uh, benefit through our economic system that, that we will get. But we need to stay viable enough, long enough, so that we can go ahead and start affecting that, that change. And I think that, and I think, uh, Mr. Manager, uh, that if we do not invest back into these businesses and keep them viable, then the long-term benefit is going to, uh, the long-term effect is going to be that less money comes into the coffers, less money comes into our city. Uh, and if that's the case, we need to cut somewhere. Right? Yeah. You know, so it's a matter of cutting so we can afford this. Uh, it's it's something that we do. Well, we have, we have some reserve money right now, and if we can utilize that some of that reserve money to just create a grant program and actually start getting businesses um, one payroll, two payrolls, whatever it may be, I think that moves us in the right direction. May I? Mr. Secretary of the Manager. So I just maybe I didn't say it loud enough. You don't actually want it going flat, right? This effort and depth. Right now, our reserves. If we were to fall to 15%, which is required by charter, we have eight to nine weeks. That's it. That's tapping into our reserves for everything that we do. It is, that is worst case scenario, correct? Yeah, I do test on each. But, but you do. And so, so I, I plead with you to wait, to, to wait two more weeks, see how it goes. If we start seeing Grant coming in, but if we start seeing federal assistance coming in, then let's go ahead and start working towards it. But we're starting to see expenses expand. While we were sitting here, we've just ordered an additional seventeen thousand dollars worth of masks and additional besides the thirteen that I talked about. So we're in there working on it. And then there's another few thousand dollars that another department needs that we don't have a budget for. And that's a priority right now. And I think that's gonna take us more than two weeks to actually establish. I don't think this is something that you can do in a week or two. I don't think this is something that you can do. So short of us saying, okay, let's start reducing salaries of employees. Let's start eliminating, eliminating our current temporary people. Let's start in eliminating a lot of our staff because that is our largest expense. We're going to be in trouble if we start doing this. We need to take care of our house first. No, we need to take care of the ones that make our house viable. We need to take care of- I think there's a combination, but it's, it's, very, scary it's, it's, it's very scary to hear. It's very scary to hear. We're gonna be giving grants away when we still don't know where we're gonna end up. It, yes, you're right. And, and, and but, but if our unemployment rate keeps increasing and if our taxes is keep decreasing the way they are because businesses are closing, those taxes will be permanently decreased. We had a very um, interesting conversation with the trade industry a little while uh, yesterday. And they're not being affected by very, very little. Mm -hmm. And I know that the ones that are hurting are our mom and pops. I understand that. But we're not alone. The rest of the country is the same boat right now. And what San Antonio and other cities are doing, they're going the opposite. They're reverting their, their base. They're reverting their economic gifts. They're reverting large economic incentives, but they're actually helping small shops stay vibrant. That stay alive. So they're giving small grants to. to, to and they have an economic development tax we don't have. But, but we have. We have. Yeah, but, they, but we have a big revenue that they don't have. And we have almost maybe uh, an eleven million dollar shortfall, or more, depending on what what continues. Well, I my my motion would be to um, uh, task the economic development director and task force with the development uh, of the task. Abate, excuse me, of a tax abatement program for a period of three months for the local businesses that were forced to close and did not terminate any of their employees during the period of city of Laredo emergency order um, and, and, uh, and uh, to explore that as well as creating a local grant program to be funded through um, the uh, reserves as, as, um, as possible mm -hmm. and as legal, within legal, whatever is legal. Um, that's my motion. This is to explore, 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 let's just get it going. Yeah, to explore and see if it's, if it's feasible. Uh, 
Yes, Councilman. Uh, yeah, I, I support this motion, um, obviously. And uh, just to add to the minutes, if you will, the uh, task um, for staff as well as our uh, economic, this is economic development, you know, team that we're putting together um, for them to and, and to coordinate with legal as it relates to uh, even making use of our sports venue tax. Um, because, you know, we're, you know, we, we need all hands on deck. We need all resources we can. You know, we, we've essentially, our economy has hit an iceberg and we're taking on water and we're listing at about five degrees. And so we need to repair that hole in the hull. And um, we don't have many choices on, on how to repair that hole. And so if, if it's, you know, sports venue tax, uh, then it's sports venue tax. Let's uh, drastic times call for drastic measures. And if we've got some some monies in our in our uh, in reserve, um, let's use that before we start using general fund money that could otherwise be used to um, keep our, our, our staff paid and our lights on and all the other necessary city functions. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm not put, making that an amendment, but I'm just um, uh, encouraging uh, staff to get creative and figure out how we can uh, fix the hole. Uh, and of course, the motion calls for you know to explore the uh, the feasibility of it, and that's and that's very much part of that. Uh, yeah, Teco Garcia, please. Uh, yeah, so I, just a, just a couple of things. Uh, um, I, I hear exactly what uh, Dr. Uh, Marte is saying, and 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 Councilmember Algeld. Uh, just want to mention uh, one thing and then have a question. Uh, one is um, the the federal government and the state government have a lot more money than we do, and they're pouring it down into uh, Laredo via unemployment benefits and through the federal stimulus program, especially regarding the Small Business Administration. And those those checks haven't even started yet. <clears throat> so money's coming. In addition, um, the, uh, the the government is already talking about a second round of of, of checks. I know our uh, there's other uh, community development monies and other things for economic development that are that are coming. The rules haven't um, been um, sent to us yet, so there could be other uh, monies as as uh, as uh, Deputy City Manager Rosario just uh, mentioned that, or could be on the way. Uh, so just want to mention that. Uh, number two is just to get a clarification on the. Um, on the abatement, what kind of abatement were you motioning for that would be abated? What kind of tax would be abated? So property uh, taxes, yeah, it was property taxes, but really it, we're going to explore what is possible. And this is for that one in particular is for businesses. That one in particular is for small business owners. That That's targeted for um, the, 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 the businesses that, that take on and employ the most people in our community, the small business owners. So I was uh, 10, 10 or less, 15 or less, something along those lines. Again, something that you guys can explore. Okay, we have a motion. I call for the question. Yes, go ahead. So just if we're doing math, uh, because I, I, I like, you know, we're, we're going to be looking down this road, but just remember, too, there's a couple immovable objects in the room, which are police and fire mandated contracts. And so we're, we're going to have to chew around those contracts, as I understand it. Uh, and so whatever's left of 30 some odd cents for every dollar uh, is what we have left to deal with every other single operation that we have outside of police and fire. And that's where I think uh, Ms. Cabello's uh, comments kind of lean towards is that we start off with 60 some odd cents of the dollar being pushed aside and then we've got 30 some odd cents, 40 or much for the entire rest of city operations, which includes the health department and many other and so as we move forward we will take on the challenge we will see what we're able to do we believe in this turn of economic development so we're, we're all for it uh we'll make sure that it makes the most sense and we, we be able to achieve what this council is asking us to do thank you mr city manager i'm just going to add one last thing remember that there's a reason uh, fiscal responsibility is the reason why we've been able to over the course of time 
increase our reserves, right? And, and even last year, we were able to uh, invest in, in certain things that we hadn't done before. Uh, and so we're gonna have to be even more fiscally responsible right now as much as we can, because ultimately, if we don't take these steps, our economy will not recover as quickly as it should, and people will be hurting for much more, uh, for a much longer period of time. So uh, I know it's difficult, but we have to do this. Well, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I call for the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Mayor, it's really important that we bring up an item um, very critical. Mayor, may I be heard? Mr. Mayor? Second. Okay, 16H2, uh, there's a motion on the table, seconded by uh, Mayor Portem. All those in favor, say aye by raising your hand. Any opposed? Uh, also by same sign, uh, uh, motion carries. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, may I be heard? Um, H collaboration. I've, I've already reached out to some unions so that they're able to take action to assist in search. Harmony is already starting production of uh, concrete spatials for middle school and public math at high school. And uh, also the LEDs is starting a database of, of uh, volunteers to uh, create some maps. And so what I would ask is that uh, Motion that we're getting volunteers for getting things donated, but if there's any. Sorry, uh, so under the, the H60H3, uh, the item, as, as it stated, uh, to collaborate technology with the students from uh, TAMU, LC, LISD, UISD, STEM, mm -hmm. having an amendment, private businesses and volunteers to collaborate in creating. Medical face shields, ventilators, personal protective equipment, and any other matters incident there too. And uh, I'm asking on, in this motion uh, for us to uh, coordinate these efforts to Chief Landy to see what are the community needs and the database to be held by LEDC, who, who's already starting a, a database for volunteers. And I'm asking uh, uh, for the city manager to consider and this council to consider that at this point we're getting materials donated, but if there's any additional materials or supplies needed, related to COVID-19 that they be added under the, the financial uh, request under item 53. If there's any other additional materials or supplies that need to be purchased towards this endeavor. Okay, that's your motion. I, I think uh, Council Member August has been raising his head. I hope you understand. Yeah, no, I'll, 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 I'll look at that. Um, second that, um, that motion, but no, we just need to bring up item I-3 after this. I-3, I Dr. Martinez's motion, uh, agenda item I-3 is really critical, but yes, the question. Okay, that's good. So, yeah, he seconded uh, discussion. Uh, it was second by uh, yeah, Council Member August. Uh, discussion, not heard. All those in favor say aye. Raising a hand, uh, opposed, the same sign. Uh, a motion carries. Okay, quickly. Uh, discussion of possible action to create a citywide MEZ uh, for a period of four to six months. The motion was item I3. Oh, okay, so I3, discussion with possible action requiring that we establish protocols for businesses that will possibly be allowed to open in 30 days to allow businesses a window of 30 days to prepare for said requirements. What I'm trying to do here is if restaurants are gonna open or retail is gonna open in 30, in 30 days, I want us to start asking what requirements they're gonna need to be able to open. Are they gonna require masks? Are they gonna require um, um, hand sanitizer? What things are they going to need? And then also best practices um, for the port as well. Uh, and so, um, uh, Director of the Health Department, is there something that you think we would need to add? And it's 10.58, we have two minutes. I can work with it and bring it back to the board. 
Yeah. Okay. So, and, and so I guess uh, the direction, the, the motion, would, uh, yeah, the motion would be to um, work with this to establish these protocols for businesses that are going to be opening in 30 days. Um, so that we, uh, so that when they get going, they, 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 when it's time to get going, they can get going quickly. And I think is there a second? We have 30 seconds. Second. Second discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm here. Motion carries unanimous. How much time do I have? It says I have 30 seconds. Because it's happening. So the, number two is discussion with possible action. Oh, no. Nah, nah. No, no. I was going to do lo local laborers. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Motion to adjourn. And the uh, motion to adjourn, uh, seconded by all of the fellows there. Any opposed? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience. It was a long, long night.